Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. It was Thursday, March 19th. We were working the day watch out of Homicide Division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Warman. My name's Friday. Somewhere in the city, there was a killer on the loose. A young woman had been... Hi, Ray. Hi, Joe. Strand of spectrograph. Find anything? Pink flick from the victim's head matches the paint on that hunk of pipe. Anything? Any prints? No, the pipe was clean. No latent prints. You find anything else? I got those blood test reports and a couple of slides for you to look at. Here, over here. What's it look like, Ray? Here. That's blood found on the piece of pipe. Mm-hmm. Type A. And this is blood from the victim. Type A. Match, huh? Yeah, that's right. Not too important, though. Here. A slide I want you to see. Uh, here, Joe. You may have to focus that for yourself. Okay. You see that strand of hair on top? Yeah. And well, that's from the victim's head. And the one underneath was found on the piece of pipe. I see. She had wavy hair. Both specimens are flat. Looks like the same hair, Joe. You got anything on that piece of pipe, Pinker? Nothing. Ordinary steel pipe, 14 inches long. What else you got? Plaster impressions of those footprints are found with the body. Here they are. Crepe soles, huh? Tennis shoes. New ones, size 9. Good impression. The ground was soft. Man about 150 pounds, according to length of stride, roughly 5 feet 10 inches tall. New shoes, all right. See the tread there real good? That's right. Made to the Sport King Company. Well, that's something to follow up, huh? Sure. You could start with the tennis courts. Only about 1,000 or so in L.A. Or maybe you'd rather track down the brand. These particular tennis shoes are the biggest sellers in the country. Yeah. Where'd you like to start, Joe? Minneapolis or Pullman, Washington? What about that glove? Yeah? You might look for a missing glove. Yeah? They go well with the shoes. It's about as common. White cotton work gloves with a blue top. Here's the right glove, you find the left one. Blood on the glove? Type A. Well, it's good evidence, Ray, but where's the lead? I don't ask you to pay my parking tickets. You want to see pictures? Okay. This is the vacant lot where they found the body. Yeah. Here's a close-up of her showing the location of the murder weapon, the glove, and the footprints relative to the position of the body. Looks as bad as yesterday. Sure worked her over, didn't he? The rest of these are morgue shots. You interested? No, we checked those this morning. Once is enough, Ray. That winds it, boys. You want to go over the stuff in her purse again? Find anything more? Nothing you haven't already seen. The usual. Makeup, comb, barrette. That's a hair clip. A few cheap stones in it. Loose change, quarter, nickel, few pennies. And her ID card. Thanks, Ray. Helen Mitchell, 33 Naomi Place, age 21. 21. That's not very old, is it, Ray? Not to die, no. Helen Mitchell. Who'd kill Helen Mitchell? Why? Why do you say that, Mr. Meyer? Well, people kill for money, they kill for love. Helen didn't have either of these. No boyfriends? Not in here. She was a good worker. The union sent me five waitresses in one month. Five. She was the only good one. Did the union send Helen to you? Sure. All the girls come from the union. But none like Helen. She was sweet, honest, and courteous. Mr. Meyer, did you know anything about her personal life? Just that she was a good worker. She didn't bring any of her personal troubles in here. Did she ever mention any men to you, anyone at all? No, none that I can think of. How much money did she make here? Well, I paid her twenty-six fifty a week. It's not much for the work she did. Tips are pretty good. Help make it more. Is her home address, 33 Naomi Place? 33 Naomi, yeah, that's the place. Helen Mitchell, I don't know. You the head of the union? Just a steward, I know most of the girls. This Mitchell girl, what does she look like? Small brunette, about 5'3". Here's her picture. Yeah, pretty, wasn't she? Oh, sure, sure. Place her out at Alice's place. Nice little guy, out of my. That's right. He seemed to think quite a lot of her. Yeah, she was a fine worker. Oh, sure. Always right up in her dues. Paid all the assessments right on time. Thought you said you didn't know her. Not right off, I didn't. When you showed me that picture there, placed her right away. Know anything about her personal life? <laughs> Wait a minute. Why all these questions? Ella Mitchell was murdered last night. Oh? Who did it? Know anything about her personal life? You can see my position, Sergeant. 1,200 girls. Check them in, check them out. They just names me till I see a picture of them. You wouldn't know if she had any boyfriends here in the Union? Waiters, busboys. That I wouldn't know. Like I told you, Sergeant, I never knew Helen Mitchell. How'd you find me? Helen's landlady. We talked to her yesterday. She told us she worked at this store. 
Oh, funny, isn't it? What's that? See Gus over there, the fellow demonstrating the piano? A few weeks ago, I made a deal with him to give Helen piano lessons. I figured it'd help with her singing lessons. She wanted to be a singer, you know. Did Helen know that fellow Gus? No, she never met him. Who gave her the singing lessons, Miss Olson? She took from Ostrander, Paul Ostrander out on Melrose. A lot of movie people used to take from him. What do you know about her personal life? Well, how do you mean? Does she have any boyfriends? Well, yes. You don't seem sure, Miss Olson. Well, it's just that I don't know. I never asked Helen. But she did have a few days with Paul Ostrander. I don't think she was serious. How about Ostrander? Gee, Sergeant, I don't know. I don't want to involve anybody. You want to help us find the killer, don't you? Yes, but if you're thinking Paul Ostrander did, I'm sure he didn't kill her. No, gentlemen. I didn't kill Helen Mitchell. You gave her singing lessons, Ostrander. You knew her pretty well, didn't you? Yes, I gave her voice coaching for about a year and a half. Helen showed a little promise. Oh, not a great voice. Bad vibrato. You knew her pretty well, didn't you? Why do you say that? You take her out once in a while, didn't you? No, I didn't know Helen socially at all. We know you had dates with her. Well, that's not true. The only times I saw her was when she came into the studio for lessons. You better tell the truth, mister. We can prove you've been out with her. As a matter of afraid of the publicity, is that it? Certainly, that's it. I have a successful business here. I've spent years building it. Anything like this would ruin me. Then you have been out with her. Only a few times, nothing serious. And I had nothing to do with the murder. That's the truth. Don't you know that withholding information about a thing like this can go kind of hard with you? Yes, I know that, but what else could I do? Look, Ostrander, somewhere in this city right now, there's a guy who beat a young girl to death. He crushed her skull with a piece of steel pipe. We need every bit of information we can get to track him down. I know that, Sergeant. You could have come to us. We wouldn't run to the newspapers with it. The information's confidential. That's the way we treat it. Most of the time, it's the people who run to the newspapers first, then they come to us. That's right. People are their own press agents. Sergeant, I'd like to know what right you have to invade my privacy and lecture me on my civic duty. I'll tell you what right, Ostrander. We want the man who murdered Helen Mitchell. I got as much right as he had at 1214 this morning. Come on, Joe. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry if we invaded your privacy. I'm aside. Back to him. I beg your pardon? No, ma'am, you've got the wrong extension. You want 2511. Just a moment, I'll transfer you. Hi, Captain's looking for you. Thanks, James. Switch this to 2511, please. Skipper? Frank? Joe? What'd you get? A notebook full of notes, crime lab full of evidence, nothing to time together. These some of the people you interviewed? Yeah, those and about a dozen more we didn't even bother to take notes on. It's hard to figure, Skipper. Everybody seemed to like the girl. Helen Mitchell, no known relatives. Single, unattached girl, living all alone in the city. Few friends and no enemies, none we can find anyway. You satisfied all the people you interviewed are in the clear? Well, if we're going to stick to the simple robbery motive, they are. The kind of money Helen Mitchell made wouldn't interest those people. How are you doing on the outside leads? Nothing. If we could just find one hole someplace, anything. All right, now look, you got a lab full of evidence across the street. You got a book full of names here. You got the pieces, now fit them together. You just don't add. Well, go over them and keep going over them until they do add. Anything from the informants? Nothing so far. No tips on anybody that's been dough heavy lately. Nobody's shooting off their mouth. The guy we want won't advertise. Figures himself a pretty smooth operator. Probably made a mistake somewhere along the line. We'll find it. Got a hot shot, Skipper? Yeah. 3220 Casino, woman. Probable attack. All right, roll on it. We ran down the hot shot call for 3220 Casino. Turned out to be a typical dead-end lead. Her name was Mrs. Lillian Horn. For the past five years, Mr. Horn had been paid regularly on Wednesdays. He spent all day Thursday drinking up his paycheck and beating his wife. The call had no connection with the Mitchell murder. Unit 1K80 to Control 1. 1K80 to Control 1. Control 1. 1K80. Go ahead. On the probable attack, 3220 Casino, code 4, KMA 367. Roger. That was the beginning. For the next three days, we followed up every lead and every call, but they were all blind. All units were alerted, and they had as much information on the killer of Helen Mitchell as we did. Frank and I cruised throughout the entire Central Division. We covered every probable call that might have a connection with a murder. It didn't make any difference what the call was. If there was a possibility it might tie in with a Mitchell murder, we ran it down. We made it a 24-hour job. So far, if the killer made a mistake, we hadn't been able to find it. The Mitchell funeral was on Monday, and they were all there. The voice teacher, Ostrander. The girlfriend, Marie Olson. Her boss, Otto Meyer. And the man from the union. But nobody else we hadn't checked. That was Monday afternoon. Monday night, we went back to the old routine, tracking calls during the night in the squad car, picking up small threads that led nowhere. Three more days of the same thing. Thursday morning, one week after we found Helen Mitchell's body. 
I get it. Homicide, Friday. Yes, sir, that's right. Uh-huh, all right. What was that name? Uh-huh. Yes, sir, I have that. And what was the address again? Let's see. All right, thank you. Now, what was your name? Hello. Guy says we ought to check on George Barlow, 418 White Oak Avenue. Yeah? Says he killed Helen Mitchell. Thursday, 11.26 a.m. Frank and I drove out to check on George Barlow. He denied knowing anything about the killing of Helen Mitchell. He said that he didn't even know the girl. It was just the same as in any other case. An unsolved crime offering an opportunity to neighbors to get even with someone they dislike by accusing them of the crime in an anonymous call to the police. In the next few days, we got 10 other calls, all giving us the name of the murderer. Each of them had to be checked out. Each of them led nowhere. Saturday night, Frank and I were back in the squad car, cruising the Central Division. Saturday night's a good night for robbery. By 10 p.m., we'd run down four various calls. You want to pull over? Let's have a smoke, huh? Yeah, right over there. 125, Roger. Unit 4R2, 1254, 1254 Tower Road. A woman screaming, code 2. We can handle that. Unit 1K80 to control 1. 1K80 to control 1. 1285, code 1. Control 1 to Unit 1K80, go ahead. On your 1254 Tower Road call, we are in the vicinity. We will handle. 1K80, roger. Let's go. Control 1 to 4R2, which is right here. Call, handled by 1K80. Unit gas chamber. Save it, mister. I got a right to know where you're taking me. What's the charge? Well, let the girl tell you. What girl? Oh, what this is about. I asked to use the phone. The girl slammed the door in my face. I don't know what you cops are trying to prove. I just wanted to use the phone. That's all. I even tried to scare her a little. I told her I'd hit her over the head if she didn't let me use the phone. It's a laugh, huh? I got nothing to hide. That little girl's gonna lie. You know that, don't you? Yeah, sure she will. Come on. Frank Philip Larson, no previous record. This is the girl's report? Yeah. Judy Scott, how old is she? 20. A real tough boy, isn't he? Forced his way into the house, beat her about the neck and iron. Tire iron. Yeah, Pinker's running it through the lab now. Asked her if she had any money, she told him no, struck her again. Where's this Larson live? Hotel on there, Santa Monica. He's a clothing salesman, Skipper. Works for a big men's store, Burns and Company. According to the house book sales record, he bought a pair of tennis shoes two weeks ago. Weighs 158 pounds, 5 foot 11. Tennis shoes are missing. They're not in his hotel room. He's not wearing them. Find anything else? Rhinestone. You mean a pin? No, just a small loose stone recovered from the rug in Larson's room. Crime lab got it? Working on it now. What do you figure, Joe? I think we got the man who killed Helen Mitchell. A few scraps of circumstantial evidence and a hunch. Really wasn't much to go on. Larson had gone after the little Scott girl with a tire iron. 
Wasn't much of a tie-in, but we had to be sure. All that day, we checked Frank Larson's alibi for the night of Helen Mitchell's murder. We interviewed the personnel manager at Burns and Company, where he worked. We talked to all the clerks who knew him, the manager of the hotel where he lived. We found out everything we could about Frank Larson, and that night at 10 o'clock, we had the prisoner brought to the interrogation room. How are you, Larson? Fine, I like jail. Sit down. Lousy weather, it's been foggy all over town. I wouldn't know, I've been inside all day. How old are you, Larson? 31, same as the last time you asked Where'd me. Where'd you go to school? I didn't, I was born smart. You sell clothes, don't you? Now look, we know you work for Burns and Company, remember? You told us. Now what is all this? What are you guys trying to build? Just want to know if you like selling clothes, that's all. Well, you coppers know about clothes. On Blue Surge of years, your speed. You know quite a bit about clothes, don't you? I've been selling them for five years. Can you tell me something I've been wondering about? What's that? Are your socks and tie always supposed to match? Yeah, that's what the style books say. But you always know the right things to wear, don't you? You wouldn't wear black shoes with a brown suit, would you? Is that what you're keeping me here for, a style lesson? Would you wear black shoes with a brown suit? Well, most people wouldn't. I bet you wouldn't wear brown shoes with a tuxedo either, would you? Nobody would. That's a gray flannel you got on there, isn't it? Yeah. That's a good looking suit. I'll drop around, I'll get you a good deal. Suit like that flannel you're wearing there? You'd never wear tennis shoes with an outfit like that, would you? What do you think? I think you did, I think you wore them the night you killed Helen Mitchell. Who? Oh. Maybe you didn't have the gray suit on, but you were wearing tennis shoes. Sport King, size nine, sell for five ninety five. You picked them up at a discount, cost you three and a quarter. Where'd you get that? Out of the house book, Burns and Company. You wouldn't have those shoes around now, would you? We couldn't find them in your hotel room. Your boss, Mr. Craig, used to think a lot of you, Larson, before you started drinking on the job. Your commissions used to run pretty high until the last couple of months. What happened? Did cheap booze get to you? You two really nosed around, didn't you? When are you going to tell me what I eat for breakfast? Cornflakes, cup of coffee, a donut, sometimes two donuts when you're hungry. Elsie waits on you at the Royal Cafe. She gets a dime tip. Now, how about it, Larson? Where are the tennis shoes? They wore out. In three weeks? Can't be very good tennis shoes. No, they didn't wear out. What'd you do with them? You know all the answers. You figure it. We know you bought the tennis shoes. We don't know where they are now. We know you had them. Size nine. Three feet from the body of Helen Mitchell, we found two size nine footprints made by a pair of Sport King tennis shoes. We figured the man weighed about 150 pounds. You weigh 158. We figured he was about five foot ten. You're five eleven. You come awful close to being the same bill as the man who killed Helen Mitchell, don't you, Larson? And you wear the same size tennis shoes, same brand name. Lots of people wear a nine. That's the average size. Sell a lot of sport kings too. Everybody wears them. We could find your pair might make a difference. Doesn't mean your tennis shoes made the prints by the body. Doesn't prove they didn't either. What'd you do with them, Larson? I threw them away. That's too bad. Might make a difference. What difference could it make? I threw them away. That's all. How about the mate of this glove? I never saw it before. He found this right-hand glove by the body of Helen Mitchell. Just an ordinary cotton work glove. Everybody wears them. If we could find the missing left glove, it might make a difference, huh? Size medium. That's average, too, isn't it, Larson? I never sold work gloves. I wouldn't know. No, but you bought work gloves, haven't you? Not a pair of those. You mean like this, don't you? We've only got one. What kind of work gloves did you buy? I didn't buy any. You just said you did. I never said I bought any work gloves. You bought tennis shoes, though, didn't you? Sport Kings. Size nine. I told you I bought tennis shoes. Didn't I tell you I bought them? No, you didn't tell us. We told you. Found it out from Burns and Company, where you work. All right, you told me. I bought them. You know that. Same kind of tennis shoes made the footprints by Helen Mitchell's body. It wasn't me. Then why won't you tell us what you did with those shoes? I already told you. I threw them away. They were only three weeks old. They must have worn out awful fast. I didn't say they wore out. They, they got too dirty. No, you told us they wore out. Remember, Larson? I don't remember what I told you, but, but I don't have them now. We know you don't have them now. Where are they? He told us they got too dirty. Right, Larson? Yes. Yes, yes, that's what I said. Anyway, you haven't got them now. No. No, I haven't got them now. All right, just for the record, which was it? Did they get too dirty or did they wear out? Whatever I said before. You said both before, Larson. All right, I said both. You haven't got anything on me. We've got that Scott girl statement from last night. She says you tried to kill her. She's lying. I told you she'd lie, didn't I? I only wanted to use a phone. She says you hit her with that tire iron. Did you hit her with the iron? No, no, I only tried to scare her. I didn't hit her with anything. And how did she get those marks around her neck and arms? Police doctor says they were made by that tire iron. I don't care what your doctor says. I didn't hurt her. What do you mean, Larson? You didn't hurt her or you didn't hit her with that tire iron? Neither one. I, I just wanted to use a phone. How'd you know she had a phone? I didn't know she had a phone. I just went up to find out. Find out what? To find out if I could use a phone. But you said you didn't know if she had a phone. Oh, how can anybody know anything the way you twist everything around? Sorry, Larson, we only want the truth. How about a cigarette? Yeah. I could use one. Matches. Larson, where were you Wednesday night, March 18th? How many times are you gonna ask me the same question? Just wanna make sure we got it right. 
Well, I told you this morning. I went to a show. I got out about 11. I had a beer and I went home. What time did you get home? About 11.30. Did you stay home? I went to bed. What did you see at the show? I never remember the names of them. You ought to try to remember this one. It's pretty important. I went to the Deluxe Theater. I saw Spencer Tracy and something. What was on when you walked in? A nose. I never go in in the middle of a picture. Neither do I. It spoils them for me. Yeah, that's right. The girl in the box office doesn't remember seeing you go in. Well, how would she know? It's Keno night. There's a big crowd. Did you win anything? I never do. Anybody hit the jackpot? I don't remember. They give away a lot of money at those neighborhood theaters. I always remember who hits the jackpot. All right, you do. I don't. Do you remember if anybody won the jackpot? I told you no. Do they have a jackpot at that show? I guess they do. I don't know. You know it was Keno night. You should know if they had a jackpot. Maybe they had a jackpot. I don't know. I went out for a smoke. Well, you said the cartoon was on when you went in. Why do you always twist what I say? I told you the news was on when I went in. Do you remember anything about that newsreel? It was ten days ago. How do I know it was in it? I only know it's a newsreel, that's all. You're lying, Larson. We checked your alibi. The manager of the theater had to cut that newsreel Wednesday night because the show was running long with Keno night. You didn't go to the show Wednesday night, did you? All right, maybe I didn't. I don't remember. What's the difference? The difference is you could have been in that vacant lot the same night, the night Helen Mitchell was murdered. I didn't kill her. You can't prove that. Sure you don't want to tell us what you did with those tennis shoes? I'm not going to go back over all that. I've told you all I'm going to tell you. You know how the Mitchell girl was murdered? How would I know? I don't know anything about it. She's on her way home from work, as usual, about midnight. Of course, you were home in bed at that time. But she didn't go to the show that night, Larson. On her way home, Helen Mitchell always took a shortcut across a vacant lot. She's about halfway down through the lot when the murderer tried to grab her purse. She screamed and he struck her, hit her several times with a piece of steel pipe, 14 inches long. He beat her to death with that piece of steel pipe. And he dropped the pipe in the right-hand cotton work glove. He left two footprints, size nine, Sport King tennis shoes. I know all that. All right, here's something you don't know. When the killer scooped the paper money out of that girl's purse, he accidentally took along a loose rhinestone, a stone that fell out of a cheap barrette in the bottom of her bag. He carried that stone home with him. When he reached in his pocket to pull out the money he stole from her, the rhinestone fell out on the floor. So? We found that rhinestone on the rug of your hotel room. I haven't lived in that room all my life. Maybe the guy before me dropped it there. No, not this one. We checked the cement that held it in that barrette. It matches the glue on the stone. No, Larson, that rhinestone came from the hair clip that Helen Mitchell wore before she was murdered. That's enough to take you to the district attorney with. What am I supposed to say? They want you to tell us the truth. Why did you kill Helen Mitchell? Hi. Hi, Gene. Some coffee and sandwiches for you. Thanks, Gene. Looks like we're going to be here a long time. Sure, I got some ham, cheese, and never worse than some fruit. Coffee's black, but there's cream and sugar on the side. Thanks, Gene. Looks good. How about you, Larson? Ham, cheese, and never worse. Not hungry, huh? Okay. Sandwich, Joe? No, thanks. I think I'll have an apple there. Thank you. Come on, Larson. Eat something. Good apple. Nice and crisp. Sure, good coffee. Where'd Gene get this stuff? Cross Street. Eddie's? Mm-hmm. Very good. Well, drink your coffee anyway, Larson. It's getting cold. All right! All right! I didn't want to kill her. She screamed and I had to hit her. All I wanted was her purse. That's all I wanted. But no, she wouldn't give it to me. She had to fight back, so I hit her. All she had to do was give me a purse and I wouldn't have hurt her. I didn't know what I was doing. I was drunk. I was drunk. I, 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 didn't, I didn't mean to kill her. I, 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 I didn't mean to kill her. I didn't mean to kill her. On August 18th, trial was held in Department 86, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and convicted of murder in the first degree.